man known as the voice of boxing for more than 40 years, has died. He was 84. He began working as a BBC commentator in the early 1950s and also presented several other sports programmes, including Grandstand. Kevin Geary has been looking back at his life. He's got him. Asking down in round 12. Over five decades, his was a distinctive ringside voice conveying both excitement and insight at all the big fights. Harry Carpenter's commentary career spanned heavyweight boxing's most charismatic era, starting in 1955 with the awesome Rocky Marciano. Yes, the first punch he hit me hurt me, hit me high on the cheekbone. He had the respect of all the big names and even counted many as friends, including the greatest. I like to say that you're not as dumb as you look, Harry. <laughs> He even turned Frank Bruno into a folk hero. I didn't think I would see you again, Harry. You know what I mean? I thought you retired from the show, but... No, 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 you got it all wrong. A former newspaper man, he proved to be a television natural. Relaxed, versatile and completely unflappable. We can't show you that race, but uh, let's see if we have anything... I haven't any other news to give you, I'm afraid, so uh, let's hear from upstairs what we're going to do. The... I'm in touch here on my defo with the control gallery. And everybody up there, I can tell, is in a fair old panic right at this moment. <laughs> the first man we're going to look at is the great Arnold Palmer. And it wasn't just boxing. He fronted coverage of the Open Golf Championship for many years and was a regular at both the boat race and Wimbledon. The weather has done the dirty on us. We've had a glorious week here. But it's with the noble arts that he'll forever be associated. He covered every Olympics from 1956 to 1992, witnessing the highs... He's done it! He's and the lows. And that, in my opinion, makes an absolute farce of this Olympic tournament. This judging is outrageous. He won numerous honours for his services to sport in general, but memories of him at light ringside, especially at the Rumble in the Jungle. Muhammad Ali's triumph and Harry Carpenter's voice bound together for all time. Back at Harry Carpenter, who has died at the age of 84. Tributes have been paid to the BBC commentator Harry Carpenter, who has died at the age of 84. Born in south-east London, the son of a fish merchant, Carpenter got his first broadcasting break in 1949, among the highlights of his career covering the famous Rumble in the Jungle. Stephanie West looks back at his life. Harry Carpenter had a ringside seat in boxing for more than half a century. The sport was in his family's blood. His father had run an amateur boxing club. Determined to become a sports writer, after a stint as a Morse code operator during World War II, he joined the BBC in 1949 and by the 60s had become their voice of authority on boxing. We're coming up to the end of the 12th. Canos can survive it. It doesn't look like it. Right out over the bottom rope. And now finally a word from Harry Carpenter, who of course will be here keeping an eye on the boxing for us. Well, of course, the vital thing in the boxing, Frank, always is the draw. In fact, Ali at times now looks as though he can hardly lift his arms up. In terms of TV coverage, he operated in a golden age for boxing, when fights were as much a staple of the schedule as football and cricket. His description of Muhammad Ali's victory over George Foreman in Zaire in the legendary Rumble in the Jungle of 74 went down in commentary history. Basically, the art of television commentary, it's totally different from radio commentary, but the art of television commentary is to say as little as possible and when you do speak, to be as helpful as you can. I like to say that you're not as dumb as you look, Harry. <laughs> As well as an enviable first-name rapport with Muhammad Ali, he was beloved of homegrown talent too. Sitting here with me at the ringside is Frank Bruno himself, the man who beat Jameson three years ago. You must remember that, Frank. Seems like yesterday, Harry. Yeah. They had a touching rapport. Not only was the commentator guest of honour at Frank Bruno's wedding, the boxer built a catchphrase around him. If you know what I mean, Harry. He was a nice guy. That, I mean, that's the best legacy you can, you can give to anybody. He was in a, uh, a powerful position, and yet he was a nice guy with it. And boxers knew his commentary of their victories and defeats off by heart. 
There's the bell. It was in the seventh round, which was a, a really, really important part in the fight where we were struggling to get control myself and the world champion. And he said, McGuigan's work has not been so effective in this round. And he said, oh, yes, it is. He's, all of a sudden, I hit him with a right hand, dropped him. And he said, oh, yes, it is. He's caught him with a right. And the place went bonkers. <laughs> Nicholas has this to win the Open. But he wasn't just the voice of boxing. He provided the calm soundtrack to BBC's coverage of golf for a quarter of a century. He also fronted Wimbledon in the boat race and from the start was known for keeping a cool head when others lost theirs. I haven't any other news to give you, I'm afraid, so uh, let's hear from upstairs what we're going to do. The, I'm in touch here on my defo with the control gallery. And everybody up there, I can tell, is in a fair old panic right at this moment. <laughs> really is like peeing in a rocket. But he was never afraid of taking part, at speed, on high seas or calm waters, and always with trademark modesty. It took me 20 minutes to steer the last two or 300 yards back to shore. Harry Carpenter, who has died.